Brian, brilliant to see you, particularly off the back of the big success at Newmarket last weekend with Star of Emirati. Good to go into the Ebor meeting on a high, I suppose. And for someone who trains where you do in North Yorkshire, how much does this meeting mean to you? Yeah, York is a, it's a very important meeting to us. Uh, we really look forward to the Ebor meeting every year. Um, we try and take our best team of horses there uh, to be competitive. Obviously, it's competitive racing, which is entitled to be. Um, William and his staff do a great job there and um, they always produce nice ground and um, you know really look forward to it. It's going to be different though isn't it? Some of your owners I imagine different. will come along but no crowd at the Ebor with everything that's so wonderful about the meeting sad isn't it? Yes that's, that's the disappointing part um, obviously it's, it's fun to take the edge off of it a fair bit and not having the atmosphere but uh, hopefully the owners will turn up and Hopefully we can get a few good results during the week. So let's go through the team. It looks a really good team on paper. Let's start with day one. Will you throw more than one maybe at that five furlong handicap? Yeah, I've got uh, just another bottle and uh, maybe a jumbo in it. Um, if the ground, you know, could be on the easy side. So Major Jumbo really likes cutting the ground. And, um, you know, he probably wouldn't want to go too soft for... Uh, just not a bottle, um, but if the ground is, is, is good or, or even just on the east side of good, they'll both take a chance. And it's just going to be a question of whether York catches thunderstorms over the next few days, I imagine, with the ground. Now, your two-year-olds have done so well yet again this season. You've, you, your reputation really is as a brilliant trainer of these horses. What have you got? And is Darvel, who was so impressive at air, a possible for the Acom? Yes, this was always the plan after Ayr. Uh, we just felt at Ayr, he, all he done was Linton uh, rather than Quicken. Um, although he's got a sp sprinting pedigree, um, the stamina is probably coming from the, the sire side. And um, So we, we decided to step him up to the seven furlongs. I think it'll really suit him. Um, he's been nicely freshened up since Ayr and uh, very much looking forward to running him there. I imagine if you line one up for the Acom, that means they're pretty high up your pecking order, aren't they? Absolutely. You know, he's a horse we've, we've liked all along. Um, from the very early stage, he's showed us an awful lot at home. And as I say, he's a big, tall sort of horse. Uh, doesn't look like a sprinter. So I think this step up to seven will, will really suit him. Excellent. Really excited about him. Uh, you might or might not know, but I'm the president of the Juan Elcano fan club who backed him first four each way in the Guineas, which was absolute heartbreak. I love him. I think he's a beautiful looking horse. And now you're going to, it sounds like you're going to step him up and trip again for the great voltager. Is that the plan? That's the plan, yeah. You know, um, he, he, same with him. You know, his last run at York, he um, seemed to just, just stay rather than quicken. Uh, Linton all the way up the straight. Uh, switched off beautifully in the race. Uh, we probably could have rode him in a slightly handier, um, but we really wanted to get him to relax, and he, he relaxed straight away. Uh, Kevin rode him that day, Kevin start, and he, he, he felt that a step up trip would really suit the horse. So this was we saved him for this race, and I think uh, all conditions should be perfect for him. And uh, he's very, very well at home, and uh, he, he go, he'll be going there in good form. He's a bit like you, Kevin. He's got supermodel good looks, I think, Juan Elcano. Uh, am I right not to lose faith in him? It still looks like he's got a big one in him. Yeah, he, though, he's, he's a horse that's uh, he's, he's still got a big future. Um, you know, he's, he, I think we're just trying a few different things with him. This step up and trip might be not the best thing. And, and what else for day one? A couple of handicaps to end the day, a Phillies handicap and the nursery. Have you got anything for those? Uh, yeah, we've... Um, uh, we've a couple entered in the nursery, um, but the Carroll Island is in that. Um, he won very nicely last time uh, at air, um, so he goes down good form. And Dandy Spino is, is in the, the, the Phillies handicap. She was, uh, just got beat her head off the other day, uh, coming back from a break. And she's, um, she's very fresh and well again, and um, uh, I think she'll have improved for that run. So she should. She should Sure, well. Okay, so Dandy's Beano won possibly for the short list. On, on to day two, and I imagine it's the two-year-old races you'll be targeting again, the Lauda and the normally very valuable uh, yearlings race. What have you got this year? Yeah, uh, Halla, Halla, Halla. 
and uh, louder. Um, she she ran a, a very good race at Ascot last time. In the previous time to that, she just ran a little bit free at Newmarket, but uh, she switched off beautifully the last day. Um, then there's always a plan to go to York with her for the louder uh, if she showed up well the last day, and she, which she did. Um, and there's a possibility um, I feel he might run the first time out. Um, um, but listen to me, uh, she's a, a breeze up Philly, by no name ever, and she's a Philly we like a lot, and um, she, she'll have an entry in it as well. And for the, the Doncaster race, the sales race, uh, uh, Tenaccio, who ran a super race at Newbury in the, in, in the sprint, Newbury sprint, he missed a break and um, kept him in a possible position to finish fourth. It's a horse that we rate highly, and the step back up to six furlongs would really suit. And it was always a plan to take him to the Newbury race and then save him for York. And um, we've got Uncle Jumbo, which is only he's only run once and one. Uh, he was still a little bit weak, and the owner was quite happy for me to be patient with him and, and wait for this race. And that's what we've done. So he, they'll both be going into the race very, very well with themselves. The possibility of my run another couple in it, um, we'll just have to see what the, the, the confirmations are like when they come out. Okay, so that, that's day two. Day three, have you, have you got one lined up for the gym crack? Yeah, I have seven brothers in the gym crack. Um, he, he won the day first time, won very nicely. Uh, and then he followed up at York, his last start. So he's got course form. And um, look, this will be a step up for him again, but he's entitled for a step up. And we always like to have a runner in the gym crack. And um, thankfully, over the years, we've had plenty of horses good enough uh, to run it and win, and win it. So it's, it's, a, it's a race that we, we, we like to target. Surely the owner doesn't thank you, though, because they've got to make a speech, haven't they? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's for sure. Um, but uh, <laughs> get a few drinks down, they're okay. <laughs> I did it one year. It can't be that hard. Um, now, listen, the Nunthorpe, I think, no offence to the, to the Judmont, but I think that for, the, for ITV, the Nunthorpe is the race of the week. Batash and the two-year-olds. Might you chuck Emirati Anna in there? Because it'll be a tough task. Yeah, no, it's going to be, it's going to be a cracking race. Um, look, he, he ran. It's, it's a it's step back up and a big step back up. Uh, obviously, I know that. Um, I don't ran, like ran to okay run Chester in the numbers. week, though, didn't he? He ran, ran great and uh, he'll, he'll have improved for that. He's uh, just had a bit of a hold up and um, that's why we ran him at Chester. I always had the back of my mind if he ran well there that I'd, I'd run him at York in the run for him. Um, he's his horse I still ha hold in high regard still and um, you know he's, he, he was quite keen around Chester and they went quick and he, and he was quite keen. He thought I'm going quick so I can't see any problem with the drop back in in back to five, obviously, you know, he'll have to be quick to lay up with Batash. So, but <laughs> if he can keep tabs on them, he'll finish well. And, and, and just as a neutral almost, because you're so good with sprinters, you know, the sprinting division inside out and back to front. For ITV's perspective, you can see why this is such a good race this year. Potentially, if the ground stays quick, you've got Batash against the clock. But these two year olds getting over 20 pounds makes it fascinating. Which, which camp would you be in, Kevin, watching on? The Batash camp, or would you be with the Golden Pals and Tim Easterby's two-year-old, maybe others as well? Well, uh, I actually got beaten at finished second in the, the non crop and it was beat by a two-year-old uh, when Desert Lord was second in it. So it's, it's a massive uh, weight allowance. And, um, you know, the, the, if you've got a good, strong, hardy uh, two-year-old um, that's going to be able to, to take a race like that, and, um, you know, they, they, they'll show up well, I'm sure, you know, but Batash is going to be a hard nut to crack, you know, he's, yeah. he's got the strength, he's, he's got the experience and, you know, he's mighty impressive uh, this year and um, I, think it, I think it'll help Batash at York with no crowd, you know, um, York is sort of a track, you have to come across the middle and... Uh, it's uh, keeping a lid of some of these sprinters can be hard there, um, but I think it'll be good for him. Um, you know, he was very relaxed at Goodwood. I was there at Goodwood. You know, he went down the post beautifully that day. So he's going to be a hard horse to beat.
Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. I can't wait. We're going to explain on ITV as well, get some weighing scales out, just how much weight he has got. To, we're going to have bags of sugar to explain to people how much weight he's got to give to those two-year-olds. Yeah. I think the, the entry you've got that most interested me, and it's, it's a race we're showing on ITV this year because we're showing five a day rather than four, is the Convivial Maiden. And you, you've got Broomy Law entered there. Is that the plan? Broomy Law, yes. Um, he's been... Uh, we've taken a bit of time to come to hand. And he's, we've given him the time. I was very keen to get a run into him um, before this race. Um, so obviously I took him to, to Haydock and uh, he ran, ran a lovely race. Uh, quite green through parts of it and finished off really, really well. He'll have gained a lot of uh, confidence and experience for that run. You know, he's come out with great. And uh, it was always the plan to, to, to target this race. So um, I'm sure he's going to run a big race. And, and with all of these, Kevin, with the, with the system, will you, will you check the entries first before having a look? You'll size them up, particularly for these two-year-olds, before committing? Yeah, obviously, the, these, these horses have all their, their final pieces of work to do yet, uh, which are do at the weekend. And um, then once they've come through that and we're happy with them, and then you know, obviously, we'll we'll look at the races and then then make our final plans. And 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 with that, one of the most popular horses for us on ITV is good old Brando. <laughs> What's the plan with him? Yeah, he's going to run the seven four on the the, the group two. Um, I actually he was in at Newbury. Sorry, the city of York. The seven foot yeah. race on Saturday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's um, he was. I was going to run him at Newbury, um, and um, obviously, with the rain forecast throughout the week, and you know his owners Pete and Anstead, they love having a run at York, and obviously he's taking the travel now. It's only down the road, and uh, we decided we we'd, we'd take the chance and wait and, and hope the the ground is there for him and run him. Uh, in that race it'll be interesting to see him over seven furlongs obviously he's one of Morris de Geest over six and a half and uh, he was due to actually run the Morris de Geest but the ground was way too quick and he didn't even submit him across we weren't going to take the chance we didn't want to be tempted to run him and uh, he deserves a lot of respect that horse from us you know he's been a, he's been a super super servant and um, you know we want to mind him and Make sure that the conditions are right for him. But he's he's in great form. He's you know, he's, he's he behaves like a two year old in the mornings. You know, it's, uh, it's younger he's getting. Um, but he's he's an absolute superstar who owes no one anything. So, but let's hope he runs well on Saturday. Have you got anything else lined up for that the final day of the meeting? Um, I think Saturday is probably the, uh, the quietest day for us. Uh, just have a quick look here now. <laughs> Top of my head. Uh, all about Brando. Sorry to hold you up here. That's all right. While you're, while you're looking there, I just want to ask you about Kevin Stott's progress this season. I imagine you're not surprised by it at all, but he's made a big impression in the saddle and also on television. You can imagine the girls love him. And at Ascot, I thought, what a day that was for the two Kevins. He's had a great season, hasn't yeah. he? He's um he's having a he's having a great year, you know, it's um he's he's very, very, very talented rider, always has been, you know, he's he's he's, he's natural. Um from the from day one when we saw him right out here, you could tell straight away that he, he's going to be good. And um he's been with me since he, he started, apart from one season when he, he decided to move to Newmarket, but then he came back to us after a season. Um he's He's really, Kevin has really um, matured mentally, you know, he's, um, he's really thinking about the job now and he's, even in the mornings here, he's, he's asking to ride different horses out and, you know, he's really, he's really a team member and he's riding absolutely brilliantly. He's, for me, him and Tom McLean are probably two of the best young riders in the country. Um, so, um, his career is going to go from strength to strength. 
it's, it's amazing to think he could have been managed by Jose Mourinho and instead he's managed by Kevin Ryan, effectively. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's, you see him, I've, I've seen him with a football league. He's, he possesses a lot of skill with that as well. Um, but uh, uh, their loss is my game. <laughs> now, have you, got, have you got any thoughts for Saturday? Yes, uh, oh, we have... Um, Obviously, Queen Jojo, she's in this, she'll take her chance with Brando in that, in that race. Okay. Um, you know, she's in great form. Uh, she, she, won, she won there that last day from an impossible position. And it um, be interesting to see her stepping up and falling. I can't see it being a, a problem to her. She'll uh, just switch her off out the back and I'm sure she'll finish up very, very well. Very genuine filly. Uh, very filly, easy filly to prepare. And um, owners are local owners like Roger Peel and obviously Steve Parkin and Clipper. They, they own a partnership, so they, they love to have a run at York. So we try and take the horses there for them. And Ben McDewey, he's uh, in the listed race, he's second in the, the Markham. Um, so at the Five forms at York, he's a lot of speed, which he showed at um, Goodwood. Actually surprised us a bit, we didn't expect him to, to jump and, and, and he's, he was electric out of the gates and, and um, I'm sure he's improved again for the run. So looking forward to seeing him run again. And we've got uh, Queen's Order in the last race, the apprentice race. That's a clip of his horse, Steve Parkins. So, she, she's run credibly her last twice, and um, I'm sure she's, she's up to run the big race as well. So just to, to finish on the week then, horrible questions for you, but of your two-year-old brigade, which should Sporting Life viewers and readers look out for more than any other, do you think? Uh, I would have to, if you suppose, look at uh, Tenaccio in uh, the, the Donny, Ray, uh, Donny sales race, you know, He's, his run at Newby was incredible from the position he came from. You know, he should never finish where he did. And um, you know, the time before, he won very, very well uh, at Hamilton. And then the form of that race really walked out. I suppose Uncle Jumbo in that race as well, he's a very unexposed horse. Uh, and um, so, you know, both him, I think, will run a big race. 